I know what it's like to cut off your leaders and they're the very ones that you need to keep in, in, in your life. I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all, I try to do it on my own. It was sliced up. I, I used to, I, my bedroom in my in my apartment, I used to call it the cave, tourist house, I call it Red Eye, the cave, wasn't it the cave? Yes. Literally there was one, one big window like this and it was in the front room. So the rest of the house, if you didn't have no lights on, it was dark. So I was alone in the cave, which was my bedroom, and there would be many nights I thought I was losing my mind. Wow. I mean, literally, just crying my eyes out, you know, thinking nobody was there, but they really were, because, but I was cutting them off. I had, I created the situation. But if I would have been living by the Lord's direction, speaking no matter what the situation no matter what the cost because it cost me something it cost me literally because i did not live um I mean, i'm just telling all my business but it's all right. it's just you know literally because i chose to hang on to the situation because i was trying to help god out I literally lost my, I lost my financial standing. I lost my credit. I used to can get anything, anything, like any loan, any car loan, anything that I could get. If I just put my name on it, I got it. But because I listened, because I was caught up, because whatever felt good, it felt good. It was feeding the situation. It was feeding my flesh and not my spirit. I was trying to justify everything. Oh, well, he went to church this day. My leaders up there was like, Charmaine, you cut off. No, but didn't you see him come? I'm trying to justify it. God, look, he came. He prayed today. <laughs> Two, six months later, he prayed this day. He said, oh, he changed. So I was putting my life on the line for a situation. I signed loans that and oh, everything in my name, oh, everything. To, he, he got locked up. I thought I was going to bail him out. He should have stayed in jail where oh. he was. But I risked everything. I, I went and contacted all my contacts, all the people that I have favor with that were helping me through. I went and put my life and my reputation on the line to say, you know what? I'm going to bail him out because I know. I was trying to be God. Mm. I was trying to be his God, but he needed to rely on a real true God. Yes. Come on, come on. I literally, right now, because of that, me and my husband are going through. Yeah. Going what? through, we're walking through. But if I wouldn't have put, if I would have just listened to God, I, we wouldn't even be in the situation. We would be able to do whatever we wanted to do. Now, I'm going to tell you how much debt I got. I got $8,000 in debt over that situation. Mm. And now, because I want to get a loan, to now, now I'm walking in my promise. I'm walking through. I'm now being obedient. Now I'm doing what he's telling me to do. I can't get nothing. Nothing. I can't get nothing in my name. Because I'm reaping the consequences of the decision that I made. My God. So when I say I understand what it means to go through and not walk by the Lord's direction and now having to walk in the Lord's direction, you still have to reap the consequences. Yes. No matter what. You may be, you know, you may have not done good then, now you're doing good. You still got to reap the consequences. Oh, and it hurts. It hurts so bad when you know, man, I used to be able to do that. Like, you know, we see in houses that we want to buy, yep. and I'm like, I can't, I can't even qualify. Mm -hmm. I can't even, I used to be able to qualify for like, by myself, like 130 something thousand, by myself. Yeah. And out here, you know, out oh. in California, $100,000 is this room. Yes. That, this, is, this is 100, and you leased it. Yeah, and you leased it, yeah. Oh, yeah. $135,000 in California is literally a check. 
about 12 or 12 feet. Mine. It's a shack. To get a decent house, you, yeah, about $500,000 in California. But look at what happened. If I would have been obedient from the time I left California, and I didn't go through that situation, I would have been able to qualify for everything that I wanted here. Because God was sending me here, but I took the extended route on top of the route. Yeah, I went through. I actually came through for him. And he was like, you sure you supposed to I tried to change your mind. He did. I was lit. We were going to, me and my, my, my sidekick, Nikki, we were in Andrea's room. And we was we came through for like a few hours of sleep on our way to Virginia. And he's like, you show me he's supposed to go to Virginia. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go to Virginia. Ooh. Had no money to get there. When I got there, I had no place to stay. Literally. And no one told me that I would be in the holes. Literally. I was in the hole a month before I got my first paycheck. So where am I going to live? How, I didn't have no money. I only had the $200 plus the money that they gave me. And I was running out of hotel room. But even, remember I told you, even when you're going through the darkest time, God will still provide. Yeah. I, had a, I had a co-worker felt God told him gave me the deposit on my on my apartment. Mm. I was still going through. I shouldn't have went there, but God still showed up. Yeah. But I still had to go through. Nice. Like I said, live by the Lord's direction. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. I wanted to share the, the, the Hebrews 4, 16. And it says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Yeah. So when you come boldly before him, just know that he's going to come, he's going to come through and he's going to accomplish everything that you want to, for him to do. Even when you need him, he will be there. Which is my, I wanted to go to my very last, uh, Larry, you know, because I saw a lot, a lot of y'all faces. But in this dream, we were in the house, and uh, the house had a crack, a crack foundation. Like, like literally, there's a door right here, and then the foundation was cracked. And off in the distance, I was looking out the window, and there was some, some grass. And in this grass, y'all know I don't like snakes. But in the grass, there was a huge, huge snake. It was poisonous. I knew it was poisonous, I'm going, there's a crack in the foundation. Mm. That snake is coming for the crack in the foundation. Mm. Lord Jesus, and you know me, like I said, I can feel fear. I'm dreaming this, but I felt fear naturally in my body. <gasps> the snake is coming towards the crack in the foundation. Oh, Lord Jesus, oh, crack in the foundation. So sure enough, the snake came through the crack in the foundation. I was like, Lord Jesus, everybody running. Jumping on chairs. I don't know why nobody got to ask, but ask him. But it, I mean, this was a large thing, like, you know, one of them anaconda. Remember that movie Anaconda? Like that, that kind of thing. I don't know how he got through a little bit of crack, but I don't know. He got in. And he was poisonous. He was brown. I told him the colors. Who was that? Brown, green, and white. They you know, like the little coral snake almost, but that was the colors on it. And it had a rattle, but it didn't make no sense because the colored snake don't have a rattle on the back of the thing. But anyway, this is a dream. So <laughs> literally I could feel myself going, Father, help us. Father, help us. And we're going, okay, God, where, where you at? Father, help us. Can you see this snake? God, help us. Father, help us. And literally... Before the snake was about to eat, uh, bite somebody, I don't know who it was, but about to bite somebody, my father, my real father, came and picked up the snake, and the snake became small in his hands, and he discarded the snake. Then I woke up. Wow. Then I'm like, okay, God, what'd that mean? So I wrote down the points that I got from that. One. We have to be watchful because the enemy is coming towards our house. We got to recognize that he, he ain't, especially now because we're in the month of violence and we like, Bleh. you think 
going to sit there? Nope. Right. He's going to be like, okay, boom. I'm going to get you back. Yep. So we got to be watchful because the enemy is coming through the grass. Come on, come on. Number two, that foundation, we got to fix the crack. Yeah. That's it. That's We've it. been talking about foundations. You know, we've been, you know, intercessory prayer. Get in your word. I mean, these are basics. What they call fundamental right. foundation. If you don't have a good foundation, everything is going to fall. So we got to fix the crack in the foundation. Because the enemy trying to be coming, but that crack needs to be fit. So, you know, a lot of times, I was talking to Taurus before this, and I was saying, you know, isn't it funny how when we're going through and we know that the enemy's right there, but it's because we lose the, found the foundational things. Right. You know, when we're going through, we don't want to do anything. We don't want to pray. Yeah. We don't want to read our words. Yeah. We don't want to declare the goodness. When you don't got nothing in your pocket, you sick, like everything seems to be going through, you don't want to do the fundamentals, but you still got to remember that the enemy's coming. Yeah. So if you have a crack in your foundation, what you think you going to do? He gonna come through. Yes. So if you you still even in the midst of seeing the enemy and you going through, you still gotta keep those foundational things in your life. You still gotta pray. You still gotta war. You still gotta praise and worship. You can't just I'm going through, so I'm gonna <laughs> sit down. But when you got a full thing, I know a lot of y'all got your income tax money and stuff, and y'all like woo, got my money. Are you gonna come to church? Ooh. Got my money, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I ain't gonna do nothing. But the moment you're going through, you want the church to help you. Mm. I don't get it. I don't get it. You gotta stay consistent through everything. The blessings, the not so blessings, <laughs> the curses, the when you're going through, when you're getting smacked up, you know, my thing is, I'm going to testify about this too. My thing is like, God, where am I having a baby? Come on, come on. Well, when, when am I going to give birth? I see everybody else. Yes, come on, Lord. Come on. Everybody. I mean, I know. I know you ain't doing right. Mm. Jesus. I mean, you putting on there, I'm in the club doing this. Jesus. And you and you got a baby. Yeah. You got to be, 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 we late, we late, we late. Let's go to the test. Let's go to the test. Go to the test. Woo! I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. Quit take the test. You're too early. You ain't ready. You gotta go through the go through the rejection. Go through the pain. Then the next the next month. Woo! We try again. Okay, we gotta get another up. Rejection. Rejection. Meanwhile, you see her, oh, isn't she so cute? Isn't he so cute? Baby fever. Woo, look at that little cute outfit. I'm going to get that. You still got to still be faithful, yes. even in those times. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Like, when I say I'm, I'm living this, I'm living this. We, we see babies, especially baby girls. We want a baby girl. So we see a baby girl that, is, mm, like that one girl that was here at yes. the party. There was a cute little girl here. Um, so cute. Like Brandon. Oh man, she was just hollering. And I'm like, I want to take you home. Baby, <laughs> please, I take you home. <laughs> Even when I'm feeling like that, and you know, I got diagnosed with it, a lot of people don't know, it's called polycystic ovarian syndrome. So basically, they try to tell you that your hormones are like, like, <laughs> when I was in the, in the thing, he was like, this is a normal lady's hormones. This is what they do, they go like this. And then he was like, Charmaine, Mrs. Smith, this is how your hormones are. Wow. You go this way, this way, down here, over here, over here, over here. 
So if you're not regulated, you know, it makes it hard, quote, unquote, to get pregnant or to conceive. So even in the midst of a doctor telling me I can't conceive, he, know, he actually told me we very firm. I got a lot of eggs. They just hanging out. They hanging out, waiting for God to move. Yes. Yes. Exactly. But they hanging out because we saw them. It was like a cluster of like literally 20. They just hanging. They hanging out. They there. You can see. Them. Like I said, you can see the blessing, but you still gotta go through the process. Oh, that's it right there. That's I see it, God. That's it. I mean, literally. I'm like, babe. My God. Remember the picture? The picture said there was 20. <laughs> There's 20. That was when we go. September? Where are we at now? Six months later. So <laughs> I'm like, it was 20 of them. Where are they at? What are we doing? We're doing everything right, right? Uh,